There are three particular mistakes that I see newbies make time and time again that cause them a lot of pain. If you don't want to go through that pain, in this video, I'm going to tell you what those mistakes are and how to avoid them. The first mistake is a really painful one because it starts with the best of intentions. You pick the area, but you know the actual investment is the most important thing. But what does a good investment look like? The thing is, it takes a lot of experience to get to the point where you just know. If you don't have that knowledge, you're going to have to fall back on something else. And the easiest thing to fall back on is a number, normally a simple number, like what yield am I getting or what's my return on investment? That sounds just perfectly sensible. The trouble is it always guides you towards the cheapest properties in an area. The highest yields, the highest return on investment is almost always going to come from the cheapest properties in any given location. The trouble is cheap properties normally come with issues. Normally they're not the best maintained and they're not the easiest to maintain and they tend not to be the most desirable. So you're limited in the type of tenants that you can take on. And those tenants to generalize tend to be the ones that need a bit more hands-on management as well. But if you were just paying for your higher return with more work, that wouldn't necessarily be a problem still, but it costs you money in two different ways. One is that because the property is cheap and therefore the rent is relatively cheap as well, all your costs eat up a disproportionate amount of the rent. So even if you just have a minor repair, like a leak or a piece of furniture that needs replacing, that could easily eat up a month's worth of profit because the rent is so low. And the other way this costs you money is that the capital growth of these very cheap properties tends to be low as well. Think about it. It's cheap now, therefore it hasn't grown that much in the past and tends not to grow that much in the future because again, the demand just isn't there. So how do you avoid this mistake? Well, you just don't buy very cheap properties. What everyone does is go onto Rightmove and source it by the cheapest first. Don't do that. Source it by latest first or even source it by the most expensive and work your way down until you find something that starts working. But don't work up from the cheapest. Everyone does it, but it's a mistake. You might even choose to set an arbitrary cutoff point. Say, I'm not going to look at the cheapest 20% of two bedroom houses in this area or whatever it is that you're looking for. But if you're feeling a bit smug with yourself, because you just know that that's not a mistake that you're going to walk into, hold that for a minute. Because you might be about to make the opposite mistake. And this one also comes from having the best of intentions. What I see people do is put themselves in the position of, would I want to live here? They put themselves in the position of the occupant of the property. And this can, to an extent, be a good thing to do. But there are problems with it too. One is that your tastes and preferences aren't everyone's tastes and preferences. The classic with this is someone does a refurb and they do it exactly how they'd want it to be. And then everyone who walks through the door just goes, what is that? because it's been done exactly to their very specific taste, whereas really you just want it to be as neutral as possible. But the other thing to remember is that your standards aren't other people's standards either. So I've seen investors walk around properties and say, oh, no, no, I wouldn't live here. This bedroom's too small. And the bedroom's absolutely fine. Like <laughs> It's not a box room. They just personally want a really big master bedroom for some reason. Well, that's great. They can have that in their own home, but most people aren't that picky and aren't in a position to be that picky. They just want something that is a good size and clean and comfortable and safe and all the rest of it. So if you take this approach of, oh, it has to be somewhere that I would want to live, then it guides you towards the opposite of the previous problem in that it pushes you towards properties where the numbers probably don't work. You're either looking at properties that are just too expensive to work for the rental market, given the levels of rent in the area, or then having bought it, you then spec it out to far too high a standard costing you so much money, it takes years for you to get back to evens again. So how do you avoid this problem? Well, you need to understand who you're buying for. You're not buying for yourself, but who are you? Who is your target market? And understand who they are, what they want, and what competition they've got available. Spend some time looking at rental listings for the type of property and the type of rent that you're looking to charge and understand what the competition is. If the property you're planning to buy is at least as good, ideally a little bit better, then you're fine. And I've saved the worst for last because the previous two mistakes are how you cost yourself money and you make an investment that's nowhere near as good as it could have been. But this third one is how you potentially lose a lot of money. And you see it, unfortunately, all the time when people get really excited about the idea of property. Maybe they watch videos like ours and go, oh, this sounds great, I want a piece of this. But they then don't take the next step and do the research they should be. They don't buy the books, download the spreadsheets, learn how to assess a deal and everything else that comes along with being a property investor. Instead, they Google property investment opportunities, 
end up on a few mailing lists. Those mailing lists pass their data around and suddenly they're getting tons of emails full with investment opportunities that look really shiny and exciting and come with claims that sound fantastic, such as guaranteed rent or your stamp duty paid or a really significant discount. They'll then inquire about these properties probably be given a pretty hard sell, not do the research that they need to, and end up buying into a new scheme, often off plan, often in a city centre, but always horribly overpriced and almost always very risky. Now, this is not to say that city centre flats are bad or that off plan is bad. Far from it, we've done a video about how to stay safe when buying off plan, which we'll link to below. But the reality is, whenever you're buying into a scheme that is heavily marketed, the best case is that it's going to be overpriced and it'll be a bad deal. And you know that's going to be the case because the reason it's being heavily marketed, normally by lots of different agents, is because it's paying such high commission. And you can guess who's paying that commission. But that's the best case. The worst case is that it never ends up getting built at all. And you've been encouraged to put down deposits of 25% or more, which can't be protected. Or it is completed, but the rental demand just isn't there anything like the levels claimed, which means when the guaranteed rent dries up, you're stuck with an asset that basically nobody wants. So how do you avoid this mistake? Well, there's three really easy rules. One, never put down a deposit of more than 10%. Two, if there are crazy incentives like guaranteed rent, stay away. And three, if you receive cold emails about it, this is something that you inquired about, you're just getting emailed out of the blue, stay well away. But even if you avoid all these mistakes, you find a property that you're convinced doesn't fall into any of these traps, you see the asking price, you negotiate a discount, you're feeling really good about yourself, you could still be making a mistake that's costing you a lot of money without even realizing it. So watch this video next, where you'll learn what that mistake is and the method that we use to make sure it never happens to us.